Where the hell is AJ? Maybe he and Tony are bonding. Oh, God, don't you work here? I mean, don't they pay you to do something that keeps you way too busy to worry about my screwed up little life? That's how you have to think of me, isn't it? Four star mess. Let me tell you something. I know exactly what I'm doing. I just realized a long time ago that it's pointless to try to explain anything to you because you're just going to hear what you want to hear, that I'm no good, I'm selfish, I'm lazy, and all the rest. You dodged a bullet by handing me off to the adoption agency as soon as I was born. Well then, tell me something. If you got me all figured out, why do I bother? Why do I keep banging my head against the wall that happens to be my daughter? I don't know. Why don't you do us both a favor and stop? Because I love you. Haven't you figured that out yet? And because I want you to be happy. Well, I am. It's not how it looks to me. And I ask myself, is that my fault? Mine and the adoption ladies for that decision I made all those years ago. And I want that for you. Years from now, when you see Michael struggling to get over hurdles that he can't seem to overcome, I don't want you wondering if it's because of what you're doing to him now. Garley, can you honestly tell me that you think he's better off now than he was living with you and Jason? I don't blame you. For anything about me. I really don't. I just say that because... You make me so mad. I understand that you don't get to have things the way you want them in life, that you just have to play the cards that you're dealt. Tony, it's not like I'm asking you to testify to anything that's not true. You were his neurologist. I'm also the man that kidnapped Michael, and I'm desperately trying to put that behind me. That doesn't have to come up. Of course it does. Alexis Davis is going to use that to discredit me any way she can. I don't want to stir up all this stuff. I've got a custody case of my own to think about. I could always have you subpoenaed. You don't need me. Subpoena the records. Any competent neurologist could testify to the same thing that I would without being accused of having an axe to grind. He has no context for emotion. Mm -hmm. Fear, mm -hmm. affection, empathy, they're all foreign to him, which means that he's not fit to raise a cat. And the facts speak for themselves in this case. Tony, I want you to speak them. You treated him. You saw firsthand. You know, I would help you if I could. I just can't get involved right now. Why won't you tell me what Alexis wanted? I think a better question is why were you eavesdropping on us? Would you have rather I announced myself? You got out of bed, you threw your clothes on, then you never came back. Can we just drop it? Please. All right. Fine. I mean, it's not like we don't have other things to talk about, right? Speaking of which, can you come by my office tomorrow? My deception office. I would, well, if you are willing, like to discuss you taking on the responsibility of the PR at my company. Me? Why? Because you are a very quick learner. You charm just about anyone you meet. And maybe I just like being around you all the time. Hey, what? my housewarming gifts, where did they go? Oh, I found a, a, a perfect place for them upstairs. You want me to show you? Oh, maybe mm. yes. <laughs> Nicholas? Counselor. Hey, I know to go Nichols. It was terrible. First, he wouldn't let me in. You? Miss Persuasion? Then he set the dogs on me. No, he did not. What's this? Do you think you can restore that, or is it too late? Ah. April Fool's. <laughs> That's very funny. It's very funny. <laughs> 
And then there was the great Robert Johnson. The folklore on him is that he sold his soul to Satan for a fast ride and an early exit. I think this is fascinating. But, you know, I just don't see Edward and Lila sitting around in a blues bar, drowning their sorrows in beer, hearing songs about heartache. Well, maybe not Lila, but I'll bet Edward cries every time he hears Buddy, can you spare a dime? <laughs> this is more their style. <laughs> You have absolutely no respect for anyone's privacy, do you? I don't have any respect for you. Right, hold on. Listen, you're, you're always, always welcome where I live, but you're not welcome to just walk in my door and attack my guest. If this is your family's night to drop in unannounced, I think it's my night to go home and watch old movies. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. You don't like Catherine, and you don't like seeing her here. I, I can see that. But it's not the first time she's been over here, and it's not going to be the last. I'm sorry, Nicholas, but I can't keep quiet about this. I can't. I'm your mother. I have an obligation to let you know when you're headed for trouble. This woman, she's using you. you using me for what? <sighs> to get back at your father and me then the best way to thwart her is to not let it bother you. Nicholas, this relationship is not what you think it is. I don't think I'm being unrealistic about it. No? No? Oh. Then do you realize that before it's over, she will hurt you and she will betray you? I don't see how you can just know that. Ah, uh, look, you know, um... Look how she's maneuvering everything, right? Now you're her defender. Your, your father and I can't even mention her name to you without risking a fight with you. Well, then uh, maybe you should, I don't know, change the subject or leave. Right. You're not trying to get my wife drunk and make a public spectacle of her again, are you? No, Bubba, just a public spectacle party. <laughs> I wasn't drinking. I was waiting for you. Oh, all right, then. And I asked Luke about the kind of music Lila Quartermain would have listened to. Felicia, you don't have to explain. Just because we're married doesn't mean you can't dance with another man. Even that one. It doesn't? I don't remember anything about it in our wedding vows. You're so involved. I'm so impressed. Besides, if other guys didn't want to have a grab at you now and then, I wouldn't need to marry you. Ah, oh, there's the caveman that I married. <laughs> Actually, you helped me without even knowing it. What you said to me about being everyone's justification for the wrongs they do, that is true for Nicholas, and it hit home with him. I bared my soul to you, and you used my pain? Used your pain for personal gain. <sighs> How can I ever make it up to you? You can fly to Geneva with me tomorrow. Well? 
got a little bit right here. Oh. Other side. There's no barbecue sauce in my face. How dare you, April Fool me? I wasn't. Oh. I just thought you might like to know how it feels to sit still and let somebody stare real hard at your face. Oh, speaking of which, I have an announcement to make. Yeah? All three of my art school submissions are finally and totally completed. When's the grand unveiling? Well, now, if you think you can handle it. What? I bet Stefan Cassidy would pay big bucks for that. I think he probably would have wanted Windermere to look a little, I don't know, bigger. <laughs> but I'd rather get into art school with it. That's great. Oh. That's amazing. And it gave me absolutely no grief about sitting for me. Or standing. <laughs> and... Ta-da. You look pretty good, huh? I would say I'm proud of you, but what I really am is awed by you. I think I did okay. I think so. Even I can tell. I think it's gonna happen, Lucky. Or like Manhattan. I even got a sign. 